In a real life situation, you're going to be the one setting up the spreadsheet and others are going to be using it. And what you need to do is to make sure that they don't mess up your good work. What you have to do is to make sure that the data that they enter is valid. And that's called data validation. So let's select the cells that we want to validate. Now obviously, in the case of our spreadsheet here, we want to ensure that people only enter numbers. So let's select the cells that we want, and that could be the whole column if that's what we wanted. And then we have to go to the Data tab. Now from the Data tab, we can select Data Validation. And that gives us a whole host of options that we can use to make sure that the user enters only those we want. So let's try Data Validation. And now we can say exactly what we want. At the moment, it's suggesting that the user can enter any value. But we don't want that. If they were doing a test, we only want them to be able to select a whole number. So let's click on that. And presumably, if we're marking out of 100, say, the minimum that they could get would be 0, and the maximum would be what you usually get, 100. We'll click on OK. Now, if I try to enter something that's not a number, and press Enter, it'll say the data you entered is not valid. Retry. And that's exactly the sort of thing that we want to happen. Now when we set up our data validation, and I'm going to include a few more rows this time, what we could do is go a little bit further. Right, so we're going to have whole number between 1 and 0, and we're going to give the option of showing an input message. So, for example, we'll have the uh, title for that enter, and the message will be, please enter a whole number between 0 and 100. If we click on OK now, so we've entered some data, and as you can see, the text it displays is please enter a whole number between 0 and 100. The user now knows exactly what they can and can't enter. But supposing we want to check data that has been entered already. For example, in my supposed Microsoft Excel test, I've got all sorts of abbreviated names. That isn't good for awarding bodies, they want the full names. So what we're going to do is we're going to check that the name length, the forename length, is greater than two characters. So the title is going to be forename check, and the input message is please enter the full forename. That's fine. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. The settings are not any value, but the text length. And what I want is that the minimum text length is at least three characters. And the maximum I'm going to set at some arbitrary number 98. Nobody's going to have a forename of 98 characters. Apply these changes to all other cells with the same settings. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want it to be in all text cells. So just these ones. So I'm going to click on OK. And as you can see, nothing has happened. Certainly we have the little message box come up but nothing else. It doesn't say that Joe, for example, is not a correct forename. To find out which ones are wrong, we need to circle invalid data. So click on the data validation button, click circle invalid data, and as you can see, Joe and KT are now highlighted because their names 
are not three characters or more. However, Tim is not highlighted because his is three letters. Well, we don't want that appearing all the time, so what we can do is we can clear validation circles. So that's the data validation button and clear validation circles and we're back to where we were before and should the user want to enter some other name a little message still appears. So it's quite simple but it's a good way of checking either data that you've been given so you can make sure that all the scores really are between 0 and 100 and somebody hasn't entered something by accident that's of four, let uh, four digits long or you can check words, text, all sorts of things. I'll let you play.